In this episode of Toys Bags In, I'm gonna take you through a flea market haul that I got. You can see here, this toy vendor here, he's not here today. I don't know if he's been not been here for a while because I haven't been here for a while, but his is all closed up, but you can see kind of all the vintage goodness that perhaps might be in there. This is in St. Catharines. It's a really great flea market. And uh, there's about four sections to this flea market. It's a huge warehouse. And you can see down the hallway here, there's a lot of toy vendors here. I haven't been here since before COVID. And it seems like from my visit here today, there's a lot more toy vendors here. <laughs> The main reason why I came here because I was going to buy um, a Mad Max Road Warrior uh, figure and actually they were made in 2000 and here's the here's the figure I'm talking about here I didn't even know they made these figures um, I just saw a, a video about them at one time and I was like what the heck I gotta grab that so I just kind of looked at my local classifieds to see if anybody around this area had one and there was a vendor in St. Catharines on a uh, marketplace that had one and uh, it's uh, in the bubble and on the card but you can see how the bubble is really yellowed really bad and I don't plan on keeping these in the package so we're going to open this one up this is pretty cool this is the gyro captain and uh, I can remember him in the movie where he <laughs> always was always riding in that little helicopter, like a man-made helicopter uh, on a bike or something like that. And uh, here he is. He comes with a snake. We're going to take this figure out and take a look at it in more detail. These were made in 2000, uh, the year 2000, by the company N2 Toys. N2 Toys. So these are the only Mad Max figures that I know of that have been made. And uh, these have limited articulation. And uh, I think they're really cool. doesn't really say their names, but on the side here, there is a list of all the characters that they made. They made Mad Max 1, Mad Max 2, Humongous, Wes, Gyro Captain, and Warrior Woman. And those are all the figures there. So really cool. We'll take that, take a look at that here in a minute. Let's see what else I found at this flea market. I've gotten uh, quite a few Voltron figures. These are the Voltron three and three quarter inch figures. These are, were from 1984. And I found him in a box for $10. So I'm going to tell you how much I paid for all these. I paid $20 for the Mad Max figure, which I am opening. $10 for this guy. You can see on the bottom. Wep Limited, that was the company that uh, I think made the, made the cartoon. Or at least made the figures. Panache Place, I think, is what they call it. But you never see Panache Place on the figures. You always see... Web Studios, which is the company I think that brought the cartoon from Japan to um, to North America. Next, we have a Thundercats figure. 
I paid $10 for him. He's in pretty good condition. Needs to be cleaned. All these are really, really dirty. His action does work. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> I actually think I have his weapons somewhere, so I'll have to take a look in my weapon bin. And then here's another um, Thundercats figure. This guy is in really, really bad condition. But I'm going to clean him up. And uh, I think I have some, I think I have some of his weapons, which is cool. Uh, he's got an action feature here, which does work. And I paid $5 for him. Uh, I wanted to pay five and two, but uh, I actually talked them down because they wanted $20 for both of them. And I was like, no, this guy is in bad condition. So $15 for the two. The fact that their um, their switches and their gadgets work uh, is is worth what I paid for them. This guy is just going to have to be cleaned up. He needs a lot of paint work. And this guy could use some paint work too. So I think that we can get those cleaned up and looking really, really good. Uh, next, I was looking for... I always... Uh, they have a lot of die-cast car collectors uh, or vendors there at this flea market. And I'm always looking for the Night 2000 uh, little tiny uh, kick car, the 164 scale. Because I have the, I think it's made by Ertl maybe. It's like a, a, a booster that you put it in and you hit the button and it boosts it out. And I asked the, a vendor that I see there all the time. Well, I used to. <laughs> I haven't been there in a while. And uh, I asked him if he had the Night 2000 kick car for the booster. And he said he did. And he brought this out. This is not for the booster that I'm talking about, but this was a key car. And it's in actually really good condition. Still has the rubber tires. Um, you know, it's it's got some marks on it, but it also has the Night 2000 stickers on both sides in really good condition. Uh, I got this for $10, so I thought it was perfect. Uh, these are made by these are were made in 1982. I had a key car when I was a kid. I think it was a a silver or a gold Datsun. So this is my first key car in my collection, which is awesome. They the ba bases are made out of um, uh, metal, which is cool. And these were 1982 Universal Studios burning key cars by Kidco. So that's cool. So I got that. That was a, actually a surprise. I wasn't expecting to find something like that, but or buy something like that, but I did. Uh, next we have this guy. This is uh, from Silverhawks. And I have this guy. I bought him uh, a few years ago online, and he was just in really bad condition. He was missing chest plates and back plates i'll show you what this figure does if you're not familiar with this guy but this guy was in such great condition for ten dollars canadian i mean it was awesome i mean he doesn't have his weapons but i don't really care about the weapons it's really all about the figures for me and what happens is you open the chest and you open up the back and You can change his head. I think how it's supposed to happen is you're supposed to open up the front in this mode. Geez, if I can get it open. And his head's supposed to flip back like that. And then he's in bad guy mode. And I can see how these doors get lost because... When you're doing that action, they almost come right off of the the little hatches here, the little um, connections. So that was awesome for $10, really. I mean, this was worth way more than that was, and I paid $10 for him. So, But these figures are all, they're so, you know, to buy them loose, incomplete, they still bring 
quite a bit of money unless you're buying them at like a, a yard sale or something like that and you're getting them you know for for dollars but really this was the buy of the day if you ask me the Coleco Starcom vehicle. And you might look at this and say, oh yeah, big deal, right? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't even have the stickers on it. I did pay $20 for it, which I thought was a bargain, to tell you the truth. And the reason why I think it's a bargain, I haven't even opened this up yet, so I don't even know uh, what condition it is. But the fact that it was $20, and I actually got one of these from a toy haul just recently, and the guy pretty much gave it to me for free. Um, and it was missing the tracks. So I actually have another one of these with all the stickers. So I may transfer, transfer the part that has the stickers on the other one and put these parts, the tracks, which are missing on the other one, uh, on it. But the thing that is really cool, I don't have any of these figures. It came with the two figures. Let's take a good look at these because... These figures are really small, and they're really, really cool. Now, this guy's missing an arm. Maybe the arm is somewhere. Let's take a good look at these. These are really small. These are like two inches tall. Let me get a ruler, actually. And I've never really... Um, They're about a little bit more than two inches tall. And uh, two inches and a two inches and an eighth. In, so two and an eighth inches tall. They're really small. And uh, this guy, unfortunately, is missing his arm. But I've got another guy here. He is complete with his visor his paint is awesome he's got both arms so and they do have magnets on them um because the magnets there's metal pieces in the play sets and perhaps in this toy too i don't know i'll have to play with it and see um and that allows you to let them stand sideways or upside down or or stand on the on the floor of the play set and when you hit a button it moves wherever the metal underneath the floor moves. So super interactive toys, really cool. And uh, and we have this, let's see if this works. We can hit the button here. And it does, look at that. Really cool. We've got, we've got a little place here where you can drive the vehicles if you have other vehicles you can drive them off of here uh, these doors open here and you can put probably figures in there or cargo it's actually metal in here so when you put the figures in there the bottoms of their feet are magnetic and they will not fall out so, you know, that's the, some of the things that you can do. So you put him in there, maybe he's got a missing arm. He's got to go to sick bay and they're going to take him, take him to the hospital or something and we'll put the driver back in there. Cause that's where he belongs. So Starcom, really cool. I have a bunch of these. And I have another one. This, these are probably metal too, where you can put vehicles and stuff like that on and they'll stick. So here's one here. About the same condition, but it has all the stickers. So I'll probably be taking the, the, the tracks um, off of this one and the figures and the doors, because the doors are missing on this. And I'll have myself a really good uh, example.
of this vehicle and the switch on this one works too. So that's really cool. Starcom. If you've never uh, played with these or had these in your your toy collection, I really highly recommend them. They take up uh, uh, they don't take up a lot of space because they're not very big. If you look at him compared to, or if you look at the vehicle compared to one of the Thundercats figures, it takes up hardly any space. And here I just took a few minutes and uh, popped the treads and the, the doors off of the other one. And now I've completed the one that I have all the stickers. And I've got my figures in here too. Like I said, this one works just as well as the one I just got. But it has all the stickers now. So I love that. And I noticed something as I was putting this together. Here's my figure in here. But I noticed that in the cockpit right here, there's also um, metal so that the figure's feet <laughs> stick to the cockpit. So these are really cool. The figures don't move. They just stay put. And uh, I think that these were fantastic toys from the time let's put him right here so i have a couple more things that i got from this uh, flea market i got this guy i got a toy haul just uh probably like a couple years ago and it had a bunch of these g2 constructicon figures in there and uh, these are combiners there's six of them that combine and Unfortunately, it only, I only had four of the combiner robots. This was one of them that was missing. And, but the fortunate thing is, is the lot had all of the parts. It had the head, it had the arms, it had the fists, uh, the gun, the chest plate, and everything. So I thought that was fantastic that I could get all of that stuff. I know that finding these figures are pretty easy to find. Uh, I got this guy for, I think, $5. So with my Mix Master here, I'm one figure away from completing my G2 Devastator combiner bot. So that's awesome. Uh, two more things I got in this flea market. Um, I'm, I really like the Cops and Crooks figures. I already have this guy already. But because he has a helmet, he's kind of a... Because of his helmet here, he's got like a gas mask on. He's kind of a you know, like a, a troop builder figure. And, uh, I got him for, uh, $10. $10 is, <laughs> is how much I've got all most of this stuff for each. Got a couple $20 things, but yeah, for 10 bucks, $10, $5, $20. And last but not least, um, there was one vendor, the vendor that I bought Mixmaster from, I also bought uh, a O-ring GI Joe. This is Ace, and I think I paid fifteen dollars for him, but I had an extra helmet at home in my parts bin, and now he's complete. So if I ever get another Sky Striker, I do have a Action Force Sky Striker, um, and with an Ace too. And I always forget I have that. Or I, I don't actually have a Hasbro one. I, I made a, I made a Dreadnought Hasbro Sky Striker uh, custom, and I have a video uh, about that if you want to check it out. It's a pretty cool custom. And but I don't actually have a Sky Striker that is uh, North American made. I mean, I have a bunch of the. Sh I have three or four shells of the Sky Striker. I guess I could probably 3D print the parts or buy the parts to complete them. But uh, having the Action Force 1 in my collection is just as good. It looks exactly the same, except it says Action Force on it instead of G.I. Joe. So that's my toy haul. Let's take a minute and open up. I'm going to change camera angles here, and we're going to open up uh, this Road Warrior 
Mad Max figure and check him out in more detail. So here he is. Let's take him out of the package. On the inside of the card, how clean it is. It's not yellowed compared to the outside of the card. So I think that's great. I really do like the card in the back too. Let's put that in the back here. So let's check this figure out. Too bad he didn't come with a gyrocopter. <laughs> these guys are pretty big. I thought these were three and three quarter inch or something like that when I first heard about them. Well, I assumed, I guess. But uh, they're actually really big. Probably, you could probably scale them with your classified G.I. Joe figures or something, but let's just see how tall he is here. Let's put him here. So he's about six inches tall just under six inches. So perfect for classifieds. We got him here with the cops and crooks. Same kind of, uh, you would go with the cops and crooks too, even though it's a different build. Let's check him out really close up. It's got a scarf and a jacket. The jacket is really rubbery. And he's got a lot of paint apps, you know, to make him look dirty. He's got muddy shoes, muddy sneakers. Looks like Converse sneakers with, uh, you know, tape on his, on his uh, toes. Probably his shoes, he's been wearing them for a long time. Um, you can see here at the back, it is... Warner Brothers 2000, made in China. A lot of really nice paint washes on them. Let's look at his face in detail. I don't think he looks like the character from the movie, though. I think the likeness is not really that great from what I can remember what the character looked like. He does not really look like the character, although he was tall and skinny. Uh, he was not, he didn't look, he looked more goofier than this. But he's got the goggles and uh, the night, uh, the night vision, I think that goes down over his goggles or something like that. They're kind of digital or something. He's got crazy big hands. Five points of articulation, I think. That's what it looks like here, five points. Uh, no wrist, no ankles. So there you go. He did come with this crossbow, which uh, doesn't have a handle. So I guess you have to put it in his hand like this. So that fits pretty good. Uh, in the movie, you can remember he did have telescope <clears throat> that he would look through. It's a pretty long telescope. And in the movie, he did have, I believe, he had a snake or there was a snake that was, he used this <clears throat> to scare people or I can't remember in the movie, uh, something about snakes. I didn't remember there was a snake. Um, if either he was scared of the snake or he had snake as a pet. Put that around his head, maybe. <laughs> the only place you can really put it is on his head. So there he is. It's the Gyro Captain. For March 2022, that was my toy haul at the flea market in Ontario, Canada. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you saw some things that you've not seen before or um, things that you enjoy looking at. Thanks for watching this episode of Toys Back Zen. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell for more videos to watch. 
and leave a comment down below and let me know if you have any memories of any of these toys or if this is something that you like to collect. Thanks for watching. Bye.